Thank you, Beth. Thank you, thank you. I'm so excited to be here. I, um, not only do I know Grace, and uh, she's amazing, from Seal Beach, uh, Pam Van Drill was one of my teachers uh, leading up to my practitioner. Uh, classes. So I'm so grateful to reconnect with Pam and Reverend Paula is here, who is my mentor minister throughout the School of Ministry and in the early days of my ministry and actually also ordained me as well uh, back in 2007. So I am so grateful to be here and to celebrate spirit today because that's why we're here. I know we've been talking a lot about letting go of things and, and being there for one another, but when we're letting go of something, what are we going towards? Uh, I noticed in the lyrics this morning, it said, our faith can move mountains. Most of us, at least when I started in Science of Mind, I was thinking of the physical mountains outside. But no, I think the mountains are the mountains in our own life. What is it that we have given a label of a mountain that maybe we feel is unsurpassable, but in reality, through faith and through principles, we can find a way through them or over them or around them. There's so many ways to move a mountain. And I know for the global theme for this month, um, for Centers for Spiritual Living, it's about creating authenticity, cultivating the truth of who you are. And for this week, I wanted to talk about masks. Most of us think of masks around the holidays, like Halloween, we think about some of that. But in reality, we wear a mask all the time. I've been a hospice chaplain for almost 15 years, and I've do been a grief counselor for longer than that. And we talk about masks quite often when we're grieving, because a mask is something that you put up that you want people to see, right? And when we're hurting or we're sad or we're confused or we're not quite sure how to feel, we don't often feel safe to share that with somebody. So we might put a mask on. If I were to ask you what mask do you normally put on if you're feeling unsure, I bet you would say a smile, a hold up a smile. But in reality, there's a light that's within you that's the divine, that's guiding you, that's the truth of who you are. And when we can look past that mask and maybe allow it to crack just a little bit, we might find there's love at the, at the center of that the center of who we are. When we reflect that love and that light that is spirit, we have so many opportunities to connect with one another on a heart level. Because that's why we're here. Connection, joy, love, peace, all of those things. Brene Brown says, authenticity is the daily practice of letting go of who we think we're supposed to be and embracing who we are. When we can embrace the love that we are, we have an opportunity to truly be present and feel and sense the love and the light of who we are. When I was driving up here, not only did I find a Dutch Brothers, we don't have those in Southern California, I found Mortimer's Nursery. And I love nurseries, but how many of you know that the original name of Mickey Mouse was Mortimer Mouse? Walt Disney, when he created, drew Mickey Mouse on a napkin, he called him Mortimer. And his wife Lillian said, I don't think that's an enduring name. You might want to think about that. I worked for Disney for 16 years, and I've never forgotten that story. And he thought about it, and he came up with Mickey Mouse. And what does Mickey Mouse represent to a lot of us? Joy, happiness, youthfulness, love, and I think that's the gift that we have. So I kind of feel welcomed from all areas today, coming through all the beautiful mountains and loving people here that I've gotten to meet over the internet, on the phone, in person, because that's truly what we're here is to connect. That mass separates us sometimes. And in reality, the truth is there's no separation. I often think about if I'm feeling separated from the divine, I'm asking myself, well, who moved? Because the divine is always present within me. Something in me moved. A fear, a, a, something in my consciousness, or an, ex excuse me, an experience. But the, the reality is there's that connection, that absolute divine beingness. 
Ernest Holmes says, life is not just something to be endured, it is to be lived in joy and in fullness without limit. So when we have that opportunity to find where our limits are, I like what Jackson said this morning about changing it to I believe. What do I believe is a limit? Maybe there's something I could push past that with co-creating with the divine because that's how we create our life as we co-create with the divine. There's that divine seat that's within us, but the reality is we do the work with the divine in life. Whether it's to smile at a stranger, a stranger is a friend I haven't met yet, it's kind of my definition of a stranger. Or I think, I can't remember if I saw it on the, on the Prescott website, but someone was smiling and they had a mask on, but you can see the smile through the mask. You could feel it. Because even if you're on the phone with someone, you can tell what kind of mood they're in. You can't see them, there's no body language, but there's that reality of, you can feel it. It's the divine having an intimate moment with the divine. And intimacy is into me I see. When I go within, I can see who I am. If I can let go of that mask, I can be who I am. Reverend Paula shared a story with me last night that I had forgotten, and I wanted to share it with you today because it reminded me of what I was talking about today. There's a gentleman at the end of life who was preparing to pass, and he was really, really upset, and the person he was with was saying, why are you so scared? What's wrong? And he goes, mm. and he goes, are you afraid when you, when you see God, he's going to ask why you weren't like Buddha? Mm. Well, are you afraid that he's going to ask you why you weren't more like Christ? Mm. No, I'm afraid he's going to ask me why I wasn't more like me. Why wasn't I more like me? What are we afraid of in showing who we are in the world? We're an amazing spiritual community. When I walked through the doors at the Huntington Beach Church at 17, if I could blend to a wall, I'd been a happy camper. I was very shy. This teaching taught me about life. It taught me about choices. It taught me about empowerment. Our principles are practical applications that we can use in our world every day by showing up as love, by showing up as joy, by showing up as that person who holds your hand when you're having a difficult day because we have those as humans. But we love one another through that. We acknowledge the divine that's within us, that part of us that is birthless, deathless, changeless, can never be touched, never be hurt. It's within us. And when we have that opportunity to express it out into the world, so many amazing things can happen. But we have to trust it. Ernest Holmes says in Creative Mind and Success, there is something which waits only for our recognition to spring into being, bring we, bringing with it all the power in the universe. It waits for us to say yes. When Jackson was saying that sometimes things don't happen the way we, we think they should, but they always are, when I found my way to practitioner, I wasn't planning on taking the panels. I was just doing it for self-growth. I wanted to get more, I wanted to learn more what we taught, who we were. And all of a sudden I was sitting there in my panels going, oh boy. But I said yes to the universe. I said yes to life. And it was the most amazing experience in that moment. I had a lot of people praying. I believe in prayer, I believe in the power of prayer. That is my go-to spiritual practice. Because that spiritual mind treatment reconnects us with the divine within us. If I'm feeling like I'm going a mile a minute, stop and go to prayer. Take a breath. Remind myself that I'm made in the image and likeness of the divine, as are each and every one of us. What a gift that is to be able to share that. For those of you who um, have seen Frozen or Frozen 2, my favorite Disney movie, and I have to say, I worked there for 16 years, so I saw a lot of movies. I have a daughter, she loved Disney movies. My favorite of all the ones I've seen in my lifetime is Frozen and Frozen 2, because they talk about spirituality in that, in that film for me. Elsa is learning how to be comfortable with who she is. She's been taught to hide herself. She's been taught to not trust herself, right? It's the message she's gotten. 
And finally, as she gets into Frozen 2, she's realizing that it's okay to show yourself, to be who she is. And some of the lyrics, my daughter can sing, and she sings these songs quite often, um, but it says, show yourself. I'm dying to meet you. Show yourself. It's your turn. Are you the one I've been looking for all of my life? He goes on to say, show yourself. Step into your power. Throw yourself into something new. If that's not science of mine, I don't know what is. <laughs> show yourself. Be willing to drop that mask. Be vulnerable. We, we're careful with who we're vulnerable with at times, but find that person or persons, whether it's a practitioner or a minister or your best friend. I go to what I call coffee clutch with my friend and, and we have our favorite coffee and we talk about what's going on in the world, but we remind each other of the divinity that we are. We remind ourselves of the love that we are because in reality, all we have is that opportunity to be present right now. Do I wanna to get to the end of my life and realize I hadn't been who I was or who I thought I wanted to be? Growing up, I wanted to be a nurse. I ate, breathed, studied, everything nursing. That wasn't my calling. I moved into chaplaincy when I graduated ministerial school. I married my love of health and medicine and spirituality for 15 years. I was answering that call. Are we willing to answer the call by letting go of a mask and being authentic to who we are? Are we willing to have that courage to be empowered with who we are? Are we willing to trust the divine and see it? Wayne Dyer, who he says, um, not, it's not when you, when you believe it, you'll see it, it's you'll, believe, you'll see it when you believe it. I think I said that right. Um, there's one thing you should know about me. I'm very good at getting punchlines backwards. I'm very good at forgetting a key word, and I've learned to laugh. But Wayne Dyer says, let the world know why you're here and do it with passion. Do it with enthusiasm. Do it with excitement. I remember that from Pam Van Drill in class. She was always happy. I was tired, I'd been to school, I'd been to work, whatever was going on in my day that day. And every day in class, Pam was there with her music stand and all of her books, but Patty was the teacher, co-teacher, and all she knew how to do was laugh. And I'm going, I'm really tired. <laughs> but it was infectious. It was a reminder that all I have is this moment. So thank you, Pam, and to get to see you all these years later. I'll, help, I'll be, I licensed as a practitioner in 2003. So it's been almost 20 years, and I remember when I licensed, I went, that's a really long time. Hi. <laughs> I'm 53 now, and it's been a long time, but it's been a short time at the same time. Do you realize that, how fast life goes sometimes when you're having fun or not looking? But what are we doing with the time? When I get to the end of this human journey and it's time to lay my body down, I want to be able to say I was me. There's a lot of people I wish I was like. Believe me, I have role models and people who've been there for me that have taught me life and have taught me everything. And I realized I have to be me. They've guided me, encouraged me, been my cheerleader. But they were seeing the divine in me before I could see it. And I think we do that for everybody else. You might have a family member or a friend that you see a potential in them that they don't see yet. That's the divine urge within you guiding you and encouraging you and living that joy of life, that joy of life. There's a story called the Golden Buddha. And way back, centuries ago, they were, there was a, a little village that had a, a monastery and they had a beautiful Golden Buddha and they knew they were about to be invaded, so the monks wanted to do something to preserve their Buddha, so they covered it in clay and mud and dirt, and it looked really drab, and um, they were invaded, but nobody survived. So nobody knew about that Buddha, or what was really underneath that Buddha. And many, many, many centuries later, all of a sudden there was a monk who was meditating under the Buddha, he saw something falling, he saw a gleam, he saw something shiny, 
So he went and he got the other monks. He was a very new monk. And they started chipping away at it until they realized it was solid gold Buddha. All those years, they had no idea of the jewel they had in their Buddha. What happens if we chip away at the clay or move, remove the mask to find that golden Buddha within us? Because it's there. Absolutely, it's there. But do we take the time to do that? Do we take the time to chip away to and trust that if there's a spot in us that isn't feeling right, that maybe that's how the light's getting in, maybe that's how the divine is expressing through us, and be able to really, truly and be enfolded in the love of God in that moment. There's a story called the crack pot, and I use this quite often with um, some of my newly bereaved because they're really struggling with these new changes in their life and what's happening, and, and it's hard when you're newly grieving. But there's a story called the crack pot, and it's about a villager who has one of those long, like sticks with two pots on the sides. Has anyone heard this story? And they, the, the servant takes those pots down to the river every morning to fill them, and he's gonna take water back to the house. But one of the pots is cracked, and it knows it. And so by the time the person gets down there, fills the um, pots and gets it back up to the main house, half of that one pot is empty. And it's feeling really, really bad. And it's feeling like it's not doing what it's called to do here, what its, what its purpose is, what it's, why, why it was created. And it's really struggling. And then one day it says something to the person. He goes, you know, I, I'm not fulfilling my potential. I'm not doing what I was called to do. He's asking the pot, what do you mean by that? And he says, well, as you know, by the time you get me back up to the main house, half of the water is gone. You don't have everything you need. The person said, I want you to think about this. Next, tomorrow morning, when we go down to the river, I want you to take a look at the pathway. See what, just observe. So the next morning, he takes the pots down, and he fills them with water, and he comes back. And he says, did you notice anything on this, on this adventure, this trip down to the river? And he said, well, yeah. There were flowers on one side of the, of the pathway. He goes, did you see it on the other side? No. And he goes, I knew about your crack. I knew that there was a hole there. So I planted seeds on that side of the pathway so that you would water it every day. So now I have beautiful flowers that, that we can bring into our home and bring joy and bring beauty and bring a smile. I've known all along that you had a hole, a crack in that pot. You were doing what you were called to do. You just didn't know it. How often do we feel that same way? And in reality, we're showing up for someone we may not even realize. Pam had no idea when I was in, in those classes how nervous I was and, and I mean, I didn't want to talk. Now you can't make me stop. <laughs> but she nurtured something in me. Reverend Paula, the same thing. She saw light in there. She nurtured it in her own way. They both allowed me to blossom in my own way in my own timeline. I got to know Grace at the Seal Beach Church and it was so much fun. I was teaching, she was learning, she was teaching me, and I was learning. That's what classes are about, we teach each other. That's the divine having its way within, through, and as us. We have that opportunity to celebrate the divine in every minute. We have to say yes. It's not going to force us. We always have choice. One of my favorite things about metaphysics is we have our own volition. We can choose or not choose, but either way, we're making a choice. I choose love, I choose joy. I choose to let down that mask when I'm feeling safe. And maybe when I'm not feeling safe. Being vulnerable is a scary thing. But in reality, when I'm vulnerable, I'm really trusting the divine has my back. Because it does. It absolutely does. Because all there is, is God. E.M. Cummings, I'll share this last quote, says, the greatest battle we face as human beings is the battle to protect our true selves 
from the self the world wants us to become. I'm going to invite us to be the person we're called to be. No matter what the outside world is saying or showing or expressing, show up as you. You won't be disappointed because the you who you wants to call itself forth through you is the divine wanting to express itself. It's why we're here. It expresses itself through us as us in our thoughts, our choices, our actions, our words, simply our beingness. We never have to say a word. How many of you have been in a room with someone, no words were spoken, but in the silence, you felt the love that was there? That's the divine expressing itself through each and every one of us. I'd like to invite us to turn within in prayer because I recognize and know that there's a divine presence, there's a divine light, there's a divine spark that is within each and every one of us. It is that truth of who we are, that God and I are one, that you and I are one in God, that there is that spot where God is not. There is no place where I do not feel, sense, and know the divine from within. And I claim and know that truth for each and every one of us. Because when we allow that truth of who we are to shine forth in whatever way we are called to do it, that there is that divine light that says yes. There is that divine light that expresses itself in magnificent, beautiful, joyful ways. As I step into that power and that light, I say, thank you, God. Giving thanks for this time together, I am so grateful. Releasing my word into the law, I know it is done. I let it be, and so it is. Thank you for allowing me to be here this morning. Namaste.